Right, guys, great job making the playoff of the Champions League. Yet again, we're taking on a familiar foe here in Mijerland. We actually got the better of these guys across two leagues in the Europa League a few years ago, even though it was in the group stage, okay? So we know that we can beat these guys. Let's make sure that we make our way through to the Champions League yet again. Oh, hold on, guys. Get, get to train, will you? Oh, you fin take. Right, I need to go check this out, guys. Let's keep training hard. And welcome to episode number 86 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode. As you can see on screen, we have got our youth in taken off the back of that. We've got the Champions League playoff. It is another Nordic derby as we take on Mizuland of Denmark over two legs to try and make our way into the group stages of the Champions League for the second straight season. So if you are looking forward to today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to click on that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we are starting off today's episode with our youth intake and despite it being rated lower than what it came up on the preview that we did show you guys at the end of yesterday's episode which also had our third qualifying round tie that was against Hammarby of Sweden if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner but it is a little bit lower rated we were expecting a good intake but despite that this is still one of the better ones that we've actually had in this save so far and that is because we've got some players with some decent potential there you can see we've actually got some top talents this year which is something which we haven't had over the past few seasons so finally that investment that we did make into the youth facilities here at the club might be paying off the so two players who we are definitely Gonna sign a Gunnar Sigpjörsson. He is a defensive midfielder. He looks like he has a decent amount of potential. Two and a half star gold, three and a half star white, 15 years old. Good determination as well as tackling. Hopefully he can do something for us in the future in the first team. But the real gem of this youth intake is Paul Velder. Velder Marson, he is an out and out midfielder. He's an attacking midfielder. We'll probably train him up in the end to beat either a box to box or Mazala for the current system that we do use, but one star current ability, three star gold potential could be four star potential with that extra white star. Nothing that stands out there too much in terms of his attributes, but with that potential, he could be one of the better ones that we've had come through the club here at Volsunga, especially considering the stage that we are at in this save now, having four star potential is actually quite good compared to when we were getting this in past years for players from our past youth intakes. Down below that, we've got a few average-looking talents. We'll probably definitely sign that midfielder at the top there, Thomas Orley Vansdal, I believe is how you would pronounce that name. Three-star potential, half a star, current ability. He looks okay, good flair, decent determination, and decision-making. Another central midfielder, so this youth intake is going to really help bolster our midfield stocks in our under-19 team and then down below that we've got a lot of players with two and a half star potential and a few who are a little bit worse off whether we sign those guys or not will probably depend on how they perform in the trial game which unfortunately can't actually attend this time around because it does clash with the game that we do have coming up against Miju Lam but that does look like a fairly decent youth intake compared to what we have had over the past few seasons here at Volsung and certainly the best one that we've had since we did do that upgrade to our facilities here at the club but now we look forward to the game in today's episode is the Champions League playoff we are taking on Mizu Landa team who we do have a little bit of history with as you would have been able to tell by the intro we did play these guys in a group of the Europa League a few seasons ago which also included Atletico Madrid and Lazio our record against these guys actually isn't that bad despite the fact that we did finish below them in our group that was because they somehow picked up points against Atletico Madrid a win and a draw against those guys but we actually bet them 2-1 if it was a two-legged tie in that group picking up four points while they picked up the one in our matches against them but somehow they finished above us in the group thanks to those points that they did pick up against Atletico Madrid in the end we finished third and it was Lazio who finished fourth but we should be a little bit stronger than we were a few seasons ago in that Europa League group so hopefully we can beat these guys and make our way through to the Champions League group stage for the second straight season. They are a club with three and a half star reputation, so a full star 
high reputation than what we do have here at Volsunga and their team looking fairly similar to the one that we did meet in the Europa League a few seasons ago. Still got the New Zealand goalkeeper and Michael Wood as their captain of the club. But hopefully we can produce something similar to what we did against these guys in that group a few seasons ago and go through to the group stage draw for the Champions League, which hopefully will also be coming up later in today's episode. If not, it will be the Europa League draw. Either way, we will have a draw at the end of today's episode. But we go into this one with only a few injury concerns, and it is to our backup players. That is Nicholas Zimmerman. He has got a pulled hamstring. Also, Bedrizik, he has got a damaged heel, albeit he wouldn't have been part of our bench options for this upcoming first league. Anyway, before we do get into the first league. Also, just remember that we do need to have a look at how the other Icelandic teams did get on in the second league of the third qualifying round of the conference league. We did have two teams in that third qualifying round, so we'll just go back and have a look. In fact, we'll go back to the stages part and have a look at what did happen. The first team was Akranes, unfortunately, as we somewhat expected against a good team like Legia Warsaw. They suffered a 5-1 defeat on aggregate, so they are out, but we make our way down a bit further, and Valorakovic have made their way through to a conference league playoff after beating Zoya in both legs, 2-1 in the first league, 2-0 in the second league, they win 4-1 on aggregate, so they just have to win one more tie to make their way through to the group stages of a European competition, but unfortunately they have got quite a tough draw there, taking on a good team in standard Liège of Belgium so don't like their hopes but they've already done more than most teams have done recently in terms of helping us out in European qualifying over the past few seasons you never know they might still find their way into the group stages of that conference league it would be the first time that another team apart from us have made their way into the group stages of a European competition in the safe so far but it does look like a tough task there for Valerak Kivik against Standard Liege but that covers off all the admin stuff prior to the first league of this Champions League playoff. And we'll come back shortly from the Laugardas Volop for our home league of the playoff against Mijuland of Denmark. And here are the team sheets for this first league. We are full strength for this one. Nicholas Zimmerman has actually recovered enough to make his way onto the bench after that little injury that he had. So we are actually at full strength for this one, both staying 11 and our bench. So exactly what we would want going into a Champions League playoff, Mijuland on the right, a few familiar names, as I said before, from when we took these guys on in the Europa League a few seasons ago. Hopefully, we can get a good result here to take into the away leg in Denmark. 10 minutes gone, first highlight of this first leg at our home ground is in favour of Mijuland in the white and red jersey with the black shorts so far. The stats in their favour as well, two shots, two none, so not a good start from us here inside the first 10 minutes. Hopefully, that changes in this highlight, we need a good result here to take into the away league, you would think. But so far, is Mijuland in possession? Ian Carlo there with an interesting tackle. Can't quite get the ball back. Same there for Nygaard. Actually got the ball that time. But they are now inside our box here. Ah, Mijuland Vlap from the edge of the box. That is a wonderful strike from Mikhail Vlap. And that is a really poor start from us in this home league. We go 1-0 down here in this Nordic derby to Mijulan of Denmark. They controlled the ball well there across the two minutes or so of that highlight. Good strike from Vlap on the edge of the box. 1-0 Mijulan, nice and early in our home league. Only a few minutes off the back of that opening goal. It is a throw in this time in our favour inside the Mijulan half. We've just made one tactical change off the back of Kin seeing the first goal. We have told our defence to go to a standard whip. That's something we might look to persist with now because it does seem like our narrow defence from past seasons is not quite working as well this time around, albeit that could be due to a bit of a new defence that we do have here for this European season, but we are still in possession despite having to pass the ball back to Sierra Fellini before, but now we are back inside the opposition half. Hopefully we can strike back sooner rather than later. Chaka Traore down the left-hand side for Meza Anasong. Good short passing here. Rubio for Nygaard. He finds a way to put that into the bottom left corner. That's a wonderful finish. When he had his back turned to goal on the ball when he received it there, did Patrick Nygaard. And that's exactly what we needed our first attacking play in this game pretty much. And we get the scoreline back to all square one all after 15 minutes thanks to a nice finish there from Patrick Nygaard. 
and only a few minutes later we are back in possession looking to kick on here and get some control back in this game. Patrick Nygaard does lose possession but good to see us get a goal back straight after conceding one after 11 minutes and DePrisco gets the ball back for us there. Benjamin Rubio will take that around the goalkeeper, put it over Michael Wood and we get a lead at the 20 minute mark so far. It has been a first 20 minutes of two halves. They were all over us in the initial stages. We were Mijulam, but we have kicked into gear off the back of that. Patrick Nygaard with the equaliser. Chaka Traore with the assist. And Benjamin Rubio with a nice finish. 2-1 Volsunga after 20 minutes. And up to the 27 minute mark for our next highlight. It is a throw in here for Mijulam, but inside their own half. Albeit similar situation to where they launched their attack for the first goal from. It's a good chance there for Rubio after a loose pass, but it's saved by Michael Wood, and it does remain 2-1 at the 27-minute mark, albeit we'll see what comes here from the corner. Can we pick out Paolo? We do, but his header goes over the bar. Galtason on a yellow card, so we'll get him to ease off tackles, but we are still 2-1 up. And up to the 36-minute mark, it is another highlight starting with a throw in here for our Danish opposition, yet again having to play out from inside their own half, but Thiago Polo there with an interception. We'll get something going here on the counter-attack. Carlo back to Nygaard. Gautason on a yellow card. Might need to keep an eye out on that one if we can build a lead in this first leg, and we continue to attack here. Anasan puts the ball in the far post for Nygaard. It's a save there, though. Pretty comfortable one for Michael Wood, and it does remain 2-1 for now, albeit this highlight does continue when we do get position back there, thanks to the header one by Thiago Polo, Nygaard will slot through Benjamin Rubio and he finds the top left corner and it is 3-1, eight minutes before half time. That is a great comeback after being 1-0 down nice and early in this one. This is more like a result that we would want to take into the away leg in Denmark. Patrick Nygaard just slots through Rubio. Too much pace for the defense in the top left corner. 3-1, Bolsinger, eight minutes shy of half time. And it is half time in this first league of this Champions League playoff. A good comeback after going 1 0 down early. And we do take a 3 1 lead into half time. That is a good position, I think. Albeit, it would be nice if we can at least keep Mijuland from scoring in the second half. Hopefully, get a few more goals of our own to take into that away leg. But fairly happy with how this is going. No changes at half time with that 3 1 lead. And 57 minutes gone, we have the first highlight here of the second half. It is a throw in for Mijuland inside the final third. They make their way inside the box. Alejandro Meza is able to deal with that ball at the far post, but it is still Mijuland in position just on the edge of the box. Moroni there with a shot, but it goes fairly wide. Pretty safe to highlight that one, and it does remain 3-1 in our favor. Coming up to the hour mark. And shortly off the back of that highlight, it is another one here starting with a free kick on the halfway line to Mijuland as they look to get the scoreline back to a one-goal deficit going into their home league. But as I said at halftime, fairly happy with how this is going so far, even if Mijuland yet again did start off that second half a bit stronger than we did, much like they did in the first half. But this time we have not conceded. And we start to go on the attack here through Patrick Nygaard. Rubio plays it back to Nygaard from a long way out. Patrick Nygaard into that top left corner and this is definitely a good scoreline for us going into the away leg now we are 4-1 up just after the hour mark some lovely work there from Patrick Nygaard Benjamin Rubio just on side there when he takes the pass and it is a wonderful finish from our Danish winger and we do make it 4-1 right on the hour mark we'll just get through this highlight and make a few substitutions now because we're in a pretty comfortable position I think and don't want anyone getting sent off here. So we will bring Gabriel Corbo on for Duplisco and Caviglia. We will also take off here. He is a player on a pass yellow card. So Maurizio Goffi can come on for him. 4-1 up with just under a half hour left. Only a few minutes off the back of those first few substitutions. We do have yet another highlight here. It is a throw to Mijulam, but yet again, they have to build from inside their own half. And Corbo, fresh off the bench with a good header there to get us possession back, but already in a good position here for the away leg, 4-1 up against Mijula Meza to Anason Rubio through on goal, puts that in the bottom right corner now, was he onside? If he was, that could be a massive goal, a 5-1 lead would sure be nice to take into the away leg, and we might have 
a 5-1 lead because that goal has been awarded Benjamin Rubio's 30th of the season. And we have kicked right into gear here. That's a lovely ball from Paul Stein Arneson. Benjamin Rubio will pick up, I believe. That is a double, and that makes it 5-1 with 26 minutes left. And up to the 73-minute mark now, still up by five goals to one, but Patrick Nygaard is down to a red heart. So we're going to make our last substitution. Frederick Larson doesn't have that orange injury, so he can come on for Nygaard for the last 17 minutes. But as I said, great position here, 5-1 up. And with 11 minutes left, we have our next highlight of this game. Mijulan trying to clear their lines, but we now get the ball back and try and launch yet another attack, trying to pick out Chika Traore towards the far post this time. Larson, though, and his shot comes off the upright. Great chance there for us to get a five-goal advantage, but it does remain 5-1 inside the last 10 minutes. And up to the 85-minute mark, we are still on the attack here, looking to extend the lead as we do hold this 5-1 lead. We just keep position there in a little bit of an aerial ping-pong battle. And Anasan plays a nice ball over there for Benjamin Rubio. He tucks it away, potentially, I think, for his hat-trick. We'll just have to wait and see here if VAR is going to allow this goal like the previous one. And unfortunately, that goal has been disallowed, so it does remain 5-1 with five minutes to go. Anasan with another good ball here, but Rubio just a stride offside. And we keep that four-goal advantage late here in the first league. And up to the 90-minute mark, Michael Wood with a clearance as we have three minutes of injury time to get through. But it is Mijuland here who are on the attack. They probably need a goal back here because we are in a very strong position. Going into the away leg, Frederick Larson tried to get something going there. On the counter-attack, it's Vlap trying to look for a double. But thankfully, his shot does go high and wide. And that will do it. We pick up a 5-1 win. In fact, Benjamin Rubio did pick up a hat-trick. He got one more goal in that first half than I did think. So a great performance there from our leading Lighthouse star player here at the club. He picked up a hat-trick as well as an assist. And he has had a great game. Here's Benjamin Rubio. Patrick Nygaard also picking up a double. And after going 1-0 down early, that is a very good advantage to be taking in to the away leg. 5-1 as we do head to Denmark for the second leg of this Champions League playoff. And we cut back in between these two legs of this Champions League playoff because we're just about to play a game against Breda Blick, which Werner Bayer would have been selective for, but he has gone on the booze, it is fair to say. Fire Saga must have been doing one heck of a performance at the Husevik pub last night because he has left the bar in the early hours of the morning. So Werner Bayer is being a bit of a naughty boy. He is not registered for the Champions League squad these days, so that doesn't really impact us in that regard, but he would have actually got a start against Breda Blick, of course, Nathaniel Satole, who we did sign because Ustende were after him in the past transfer window. He is now our backup box-to-box -box midfielder, but we do have some good depth in that position, just trying to build a little bit of strength there in case a good offer does come in for Caviglia, seeing as he is now getting on in age, albeit his performances have still been very, very good for us in that midfield. But Werner Bayer, being a naughty, naughty boy, getting on the booze at the local pub, albeit fair play to him, because I don't think there's much else to do in Husevik apart from get on the booze. But just a little bit of an interesting update there, and we'll come back shortly for the second leg of that Champions League playoff with a nice 5-1 advantage. And team sheets for this second leg of the Champions League playoff, there is the Mijulan team looking fairly similar to the lineup information that they did put out for that first leg we have made a few changes due to yellow cards I think with the advantage that we do have we can afford a bit of rotation so Satole, Renzi and Corbo all come in for Caviglia, Gautason and Deplisco respectively but a good advantage here 5-1 as we do kick off the second leg in Denmark. Only a few minutes gone we do have the first highlight of this game it is a goal kick which we do take short Chaka Traore has picked up a little bit of an orange injury icon there early, so we might have to take him off early in this game, but we are still on the attack. Lovely ball there for Rubio, comes off the upright, falls back at his feet, and he backs up a hat-trick in the first leg with yet another goal. He is hitting his form at the perfect stage of the season here, and we do take a 1-0 lead nice and early here in the away leg, potentially. We might win all of our Champions League qualifying games yet again. A lot of luck there with the ball falling back at his feet after hitting the upright, but it is Volsunga 1, Mijulan nil, nice and early here in the away leg, and we are now 6-1 up 
on aggregate. And we have another highlight here starting very shortly off the back of opening the scoring here in Denmark. Chaka Chaiare still on an orange injury. We'll just see if he recovers through the early stages here of this first half. Another good chance there for Rubio. Hits the side netting after eight minutes. We still hold a 1-0 lead, but yet another highlight here in the early stages of this game. And it is a throw-in here for Mijuland inside the first 10 minutes. Can they strike back? Good chance there for Klaev. Horse is a good save there out of Sierra Fellini. Corbo does deal with the danger there, though, through a header, and it remains 1-0 in our favour at the 10-minute mark of the second league. And just before the 19-minute mark, we are going to make our first substitution. Chaka Traore has a potential lower leg injury with that orange icon he did pick up early. So we'll just play it safe. Frederick Larson to come on for him, but five goals up on aggregate. And up to the 24-minute mark for our next highlight, it is a throw in our favour as we do it to play out from inside our home half. But a good start here to the second leg. And Frederick Larson off the bench has a little bit too much pace there. For the Michelin defence, gets a shot off, but it does come off the upright. It's a poor clearance. We can't quite take advantage of it, and we still hold a five-goal lead on aggregate as we do approach the half-hour mark of the second league. But we do yet again have another highlight here shortly off the back of a previous one. This time, though, Mijuland are on the attack here through Moroni, and they just center the ball there to Vlap, who did score that good early goal in the first league. And Zhong there gets beyond his man. It was a poor slide tackle that. I believe from Mazer it should have been there on our left hand side and they do get an equaliser here in the second leg here through Zhong Du Mijalan but we are still in a very good position to be making the Champions League group stage for the second season in a row. Poor slide tackle that to give Zhong too much free space and it is one all here as we do approach the half hour mark. And very shortly off the back of that equaliser we are back down the other end for a highlight hopefully in our favour as Mazer gets the ball back. From that throw and Anderson back to Mazer in there for Larson. What can he do here? Back to goal. Plays it back for Renzi. Satole, what can he do? Back to Renzi. We just camp outside. The Michelin box. Great chance there for Larson from a tight angle. Forces a decent save there out of Michael Wood. Still one all just past the half hour mark of the second league. 41 minutes gone late. Highlight in this first half. And it is a free kick to us inside the final third. Satole just keeps possession for us here. Having a start today over Caviglia, having to actually back up, seeing as Werner Bayer did get on the booze midweek. We were going to give him a rest and start Satole just in this game with Caviglia being on that yellow card, but he has now had to play back-to-back -back games. We are still on the attack here. Frederick Larson, tight angle. What can he do? It's a slide tackle there on Arneson. It'll be interesting to see what that would have been, but Rosario Renzi makes sure that it doesn't matter what the referee's decision was. Curves that nicely into the top right-hand corner right from the edge of the box. Very similar goal that to what Vlap scored in the first league. I do think that Kunde did win the ball there, albeit a little bit of an iffy challenge. And that's a wonderful finish from Renzi. Not much that Wood can do about that. 2-1 Volsinger just shy of halftime in the second league. And it is halftime here in the second league. Five goals up now on aggregate in a position where we should see this out and make our way through to the Champions League group stage draw for the second season in a row, which will be a very nice cash injection to the club indeed. Pretty happy with how things are going. We are going to make one change here, though, at halftime. Ian Carlo, yellow card, 6.5 rating. Make sure he doesn't pick up a suspension. Petrovic can come on for him. But as I said, looking pretty good here with 45 minutes left. Five goals up on aggregate. And 59 minutes gone here. We have the first highlight of the second half. Not much happening in the second half so far. Benjamin Rubio has picked up a yellow card, but we've got him easing off tackles. Being a striker, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But Mijuland are on the attack there. It's a good header by Maloney. Lovely ball that from Joel Anderson. And it is two all on the day, but we do still hold that four goal advantage on aggregate. And with only a half hour left. I'd like to think that is a safe advantage. It's a heck of a ball, that, from Anderson. It's a very acrobatic one. Sierra Fellini gets a hand to it. Might have actually been coming off the woodwork, but puts it into our own corner. And it's 2 all with just under a half hour left on the day. And up to the 69-minute mark now. It is a free kick here for Mijuland. And Benjamin Rubio is on the ball. Does lose possession here. And Kajuste is there. It's a foul by Rubio. On a yellow card, he will get his second yellow. Despite us telling him to ease off tackles, that could actually be 
quite costly for our first group stage game of the Champions League. That is going to be a very serious downgrade in terms of our striker that is available for that game. We do have experience playing with 10 men. So what I think we're going to do here is take off Rosario Renzi. I think we can get by okay without a defensive midfielder, Malsi Martins, to come on for him. He can go forward into a striking role, but that is a bit of stupidity there from Rubio, who's been great in this tie so far. We are down to 10 men, albeit still four goals up on aggregate with 20 minutes left. And only a few minutes off the back of that red card, it is a throw in here to Mijulan as they try and get an advantage against the 10 men, albeit a poor pass there, but Anasson can't quite keep position, but Gabriel Corbo gets it back for us. And can we launch an attack here with 10 men? Not too disappointed if we can only get a draw now as we are down to 10 men. Great chance here for Frederick Larsson, but blast it over the bar. He is actually the Danish player, not Nygaard. He is from Norway, so got that wrong in the previous leg. But with 15 minutes left, four goals up on aggregate here, but down to 10 men. And up to the 79 minute mark we are here. It's about to be a free kick. In our favour, can we steal a victory here with 10 men? Thanks to the Norwegian, Patrick Nygaard comes off the post. They play that back to Wood in goal, which is a very interesting option while he was down on the floor, but he does clear it. 10 minutes left, still a draw on the day, but up by four on aggregate. And we are inside injury time here of this Champions League playoff in the end. Thanks to that home victory, we're going to make our way through very comfortably, albeit not too happy with Benjamin Rubio picking up that second yellow card there. With 20 minutes left, we picked up another few yellow cards off the back of that. But up until then, Benjamin Rubio had been having a great tie, of course, off the back of that hat trick in the first leg. In the end, a pretty even game. And we go through thanks to that very convincing win in the first leg, picking up a draw in the away leagues. So it can't quite match what we did last season, winning all of our qualification and games. But a 7 3 aggregate win there against Mijuland is a very good result. We'll just go forward a little bit and check what has happened in terms of the possible suspension there to Rubio, as well as, of course, that early injury that Chaka Traore did pick up. And thankfully, because we did take off Chaka Traore there nice and early, he is only out for one to two days with a tight calf. But more concerningly, Benjamin Rubio is going to be banned from our first game of the Champions League. Hopefully, that is a game that we didn't have much chance of winning anyway or something like that because that is a big blow. Our most influential player here at the club and our club captain is going to be suspended for that first group stage game. A little bit of a moment of madness there for him when we were in a pretty safe position. Didn't think we needed to take him off being a striker on a yellow card and having him easing off tackles, but not great there from the club captain. But in better news, a few nice cash injections there and most notably 12.65 million pounds for making the group stages of the Champions League. We'll go and have a quick look now at who won the other playoff games there in the Champions League. I don't think the Conference League qualifiers would have taken place just yet. So we'll go back over to the playoff stages here for the Champions League on the Champions side. Young Boys, Partizan and Shakhtar all make their way through to the group stage. I think those are teams that we have all beaten before in European qualifying. So that is interesting. We might be the strongest one coming through Champions League qualifying, at least in the Champions path this season. And down to the league path, it is PSV, Eindhoven, and Ustende who are also making their way through out of qualifying into the Champions League. But we'll go forward a few days to that Champions League draw. Have a look at that and also check in on how Valerakovic got on in Conference League qualifying. And we have gone forward here to the Champions League group stage draw. We are in the third pot yet again. So hopefully we can at least finish third in whatever group that we do end up in. Albeit it would be nice to finish second considering we weren't that far off Barcelona in a pretty good group last year, which Man City, the eventual champions, did top. But before we get into this group stage draw, a few things to update you guys on. First off, we did have that game in between those playoff ones against Breda Blick in the league, and we did pick up a 2-0 win despite that late change there with Werner Bayer being ruled out because he got on the booze, and then we actually started Caviglia with Satoli coming off the bench in the second half, and it was two midfielders who did pick up the goals for us there in a 2-0 win. Goffey in the first half and Satole in the second half, so Werner Bayer being missed. Not too much there as we do pick up a win over Breda Blick, and that means we are four points clear on top of the table, but we do have four games in hand as well. So we are still in a very strong position to be taking out this league title 
for the sixth season in a row. We are still actually a few hours out from the second leg of the Conference League qualifiers being finished for that playoff, so can't quite give you guys a result for that Valeracjevic one yet, so we are going to get straight into the group stage draw and then go forward a little bit from there and see how Valeracjevic did get on. But time for this Champions League draw. Having a look at the teams who are in the draw this year, first seeds are PSG, Man City, the defending champions, of course, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Juventus, Real Sociedad, Galatasaray and Feyenoord, so definitely a few weak options there, but not too sure if we will get them down to the second pot, Man United, Arsenal, Dortmund, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Milan, Barcelona and Ajax down to the third pot, which we don't really care too much about seeing as we are part of it, but interesting to see Lokomotiv Moscow after being in the top pot last year down to the third pot in Rangers, Genk, Ostende, Young Boys, Partizan, Strasbourg, Augsburg and Marseille are the teams who we could get from that fourth pot, some of those teams, notably Young Boys and Partizan, we have defeated before, but we'll get through the first two seeds for each group and come back and see which groups we might like here for this Champions League draw. And back we are after the second seeds have been drawn for this Champions League group. We will start the automatic draw just in a second, having a quick look at these groups. To be fair, most of them do look fairly strong, but there are some groups that do have a little bit of a weak link in them so far. Group A ideally would avoid, even though we did give Barcelona a bit of a push for second spot in that group that we did have last season. Group B again, Bayern Munich and Chelsea would probably be playing for third in that one. But Group C, D, E, F, I do think we still could potentially finish second in, looking at the draw already with the likes of Feyenoord, Sociedad, Galatasaray and Ajax in them. I think those are teams that at this stage of the save we might be capable of beating Man City and Dortmund, not so sure about, and the same as the case for PSG and Inter. So I think we've actually got a 50% chance here of getting a draw in which we might have a serious chance of having a shot at finishing second in a group for the first time in our European journey so far. Of course, in previous seasons, we have finished third every single season that we have made the group stages of European competition, but we will continue the automatic draw and see who we do get here in this draw. We'll try the automatic draw this time around just because the last few times when I've clicked that draw next team button hasn't worked out too well for us, it is fair to say. But we will continue the draw now and wait and see what the computer does select. And yet again, we get Group A. It's a slightly tough one, albeit we did take on Barcelona last season and weren't too far off them. I'd like to think our squad this season is a bit better, so maybe we can edge Barcelona for that second spot, but we certainly could have got a kind of draw there, albeit the fourth team in our group is FK Partizan. That is a team who we have beaten before in European qualifying, so it might be a similar case to last season. It should be a group which we can at least finish third in, but we might be pushing it to try and finish above the likes of Juventus and Barcelona. So not too disappointed with that draw, albeit could have also been a little bit kinder. Hopefully, we can actually beat Barcelona this year after we kind of blew it at home late against them in our second group game against those guys in last year's Champions League. And we've made our way forward a few more clicks in game to get to the result of the Conference League playoff. And unfortunately, as expected, Standard Liege have done a bit of a number there on Valorak. Give it great effort by the Icelandic teams this year, at least compared to what they've done in previous years, but they go out thanks to two 2-0 two defeats to Standard Liège, but as I said, good effort from Valorak Kivik, a little bit concerningly, if we do go back and have a look at the league table at the moment, once we do eventually get there, they are actually in sixth at the moment, so wouldn't be in a European spot, albeit they're only one point behind those, and with a game in hand currently, not in a great run of form, albeit they have been taking on some good teams in that patch as well, but hopefully they can make their way into Europe yet again next season off the back of that good effort not looking quite as likely for Akranes who are down in 10th on the table but are actually quite safe there in the relegation zone I do think with a game in hand on both Kordlinger and Nuts those two teams looking like red hot favourites to be making their way down to the one deal but in terms of European qualification for next season we should be able to win the league from here with eight games left and other teams having only five or four it looks like field care and HK will be fighting it out for that second Champions League spot, the other one getting that spot in the third qualifying round of the Europa League, and it's a good old fight 
for those conference league spots. Kev Livik, Breda Blick there at the moment, but Bella Rakjevic, Nats KR, and Fram Rakjevic are all in there with a hunt still, and even Huff Nuff Shador or Akroness could sneak their way into it with a good patch of form. So those conference league spots in the league in particular are very much open to change, but that will do it for today's episode. We had our youth intake. It looked like a decent one at last, and also being Mijolan quite comfortably there in the Champions League playoff to make our way into a group which contains Juventus, Barcelona, and Partizan. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We will come back tomorrow for the start of our Champions League campaign, and it is against Barcelona at home. That is not the game that we wanted first up, because that is a game, ideally, we would like to win if we can finish second in this group. We did get a draw in this fixture against these guys last season, but with no Benjamin Rubio, that might be easier said than done, and hopefully, we will also have a Molka Bicker in final. That depends on how we do get on against Kef Levick in the upcoming semi-final in a few days' time, but we should, on recent form, be able to get through that, and hopefully, we'll have a chance to win, I think, our fourth Icelandic Cup in a row, so that's what we've got to look forward to in tomorrow's episode, Barcelona and hopefully a Molka Bicker in final, but until then, thank you very much for watching, keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then, cheers.